Hey guys, this is Jeff from the YouTube channel, The Wolf of Wisco. I'm on my way ac across the state of Wisconsin to go pick up a Mini Cooper uh, mechanic special. I had a, uh, a notification set up to buy a Mini Cooper mechanic special and I'm blazing across the state. I got about a four hour drive here. It is raining cats and dogs here on Highway 94 headed over to Green Bay. I'm gonna go pick it up here on a Sunday, rainy Sunday afternoon. We're gonna check this thing out. I guess it's really good shape. It's a 2010 model. My daughter wanted a Mini Cooper and I'm gonna go grab this one. It just needs a, apparently the turbo is out of it. So let's see what we get here, guys. Here's a story on this fix and flip. This is a 2010 Mini Cooper. It's got the Clubman that's got a little third door on the passenger side and 700 bucks is what I paid for it. Uh, retail on this thing is gonna be about $5,500. It's a sweet little car. It's uh, got great body, everything. I think it just needs a turbo. Well, I got the Mini Cooper loaded up here. Uh, about a four hour drive from uh, my small town of Osceola, Wisconsin. I'm right on the Western border all the way over to uh, Green Bay, which is four hours east. Um, nice little car back there. No rust, no dings, pretty good interior. I believe the turbo seal, she said something about the, it blows oil. The mechanic said it had an oil leak through the turbo, probably something to do with the turbo seal. And a quick check online, I think I found turbos for about three, 400 bucks. So uh, paid 700 for that little guy do a walk around when I get home but I'm back on the road on the way back it's raining again pretty much a full day of rain here well the car's looking nice but my tires aren't look at the weather checking going on here not good <clears throat> to top off the tires here but I've got a spare in the back of the truck just in case all right just rolled in the driveway here I've been gone about nine hours total that was four hours each way and uh got it home no problems no issues at all yeah man this thing is clean it's a beautiful little mini here there's some issue with the back door the inner panel is kind of screwed up in there i'll get that fixed no scratches one maybe one or two little door dings but this thing is nearly mint so uh, on the way home, I watched a little video on how to replace the turbo. The whole front end needs to come apart. It's, it's quite an operation to get to the, the turbo on this thing. But uh, what, a, what a nice little car. Let's get it off the trailer here. All right, got the trailer put away. I had to bring a jump pack. This thing sat for a year, and apparently the turbo, you know, turbos have an oil system, and there's a, a seal in there to keep the oil out of the compressed air portion, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's what's wrong with it, the turbo right here. But yeah, I think you gotta take the front of the car off to get to it. She's in great shape. Look at that thing, look at this. Really nice leather, a little bit worn right here and right here. Otherwise it's got the iconic, you know, eight inch diameter speedometer set up here and the cool tack mounted on the steering wheel. Nice back seat and this other thing here, it's called the uh, Cooper S. What version is this, Clubman? It's got this back plastic panel here is off the door and there's a there's a shock absorber rod missing other than that she said it's good to go it's got this fancy mini bike rack on it too i mean gotta think that this accessory bike rack i got all three keys for it i gotta think that that's got to be worth some money but a uh, nice accessory there all right uh let's get her in the shop Yeah, in this video, we're gonna show you how to put in this turbo cartridge. 
It's not every step by step, but I was able to take this cartridge in and out without pulling the whole front of the car apart like uh, as shown on a lot of YouTube videos. So um, just a couple tricks to get to a couple different uh, fasteners that are hard to access and uh, I'll show you how I do it. Thanks. All right guys, just got the Mini Cooper pulled in the shop. It's been sitting outside for a couple of weeks. I got some parts ordered. Let's so check it out. So I was told by the previous owner that the dealership said that the turbo, uh, it's got an oil feed here feeding the turbo at the center section. There's a, a bearing in here with a, a couple bearings and seals. Um, it was dumping oil into the exhaust. Hopefully the catalytic converter is not shot. Um, I had to put a jump pack on it to get it in the, the, the garage, get it started. Battery's dead, so I'm gonna try to get that charged up uh, on a slow charger. And uh, I did order a turbo uh, cartridge. Now an entire turbo would have been a couple to $400, I think this was 78 bucks. And a cartridge is basically the center section of the turbocharger assembly. So you don't need to replace nothing wrong with the outer housings and the and the uh, the blower housing and then the other hot side housing on this side for the turbo it uh, uh, you know this section can be replaced so that's my plan is to put $78 into this thing and uh, uh, there's some videos online you got to pull off headlights this whole section bumper cover you know then the radiator and then I've seen guys that who struggle and they take the assembly out right from the top there's some bolts that are really hard to reach underneath here but i'm going to try to do it uh the uh the time consuming difficult way and leave the car intact and attack pulling the turbocharger off from the top all right getting into it i removed the heat shield here for the turbo there's a few top bolts easy to get at that one's slotted there you just got to loosen that one up and these two down below and i might slot those out just so i can get the bolt started because they're, they're way down underneath the turbo there kind of tough to get at so then uh then it's pretty simple uh the the turbo inlet outlet hoses this is the oil feed from the uh, oil pump basically feeding the turbo and then there's a drain below so i got to get that turbo drain down below there and then this is a cooler i believe two the turbo coolers two fittings here and i took off this band clamp that uh, clamps the turbo. This clamp right here went right here. That's all accessible from the top. So we'll keep digging into it and see if we get to a point where I gotta, you know, where I can't access, so I gotta pull this off. But I'm gonna keep going here. Okay, so I got the turbo compressor, the housing off here. And how I got to these bolts, three of them were easy to access. The one way down below there, you can't actually get at it until you take this band clamp off. Once you pull the band clamp off, this whole assembly can move aside and you can get on it. I even got on it with a power ratchet. I could fit that, get that last bolt with this power ratchet. Then I put the bolt back in here so I could knock this turbo off of the flange. And I was able to get the um, turbo drain bolt off. It's a small eight millimeter bolt. And I just reached underneath right here with a wrench. It doesn't matter. All right, so now that I took the band clamp off there and the turbo drain, I used a screwdriver here and popped it out of the bottom of the cartridge. I'll knock that. I had this off once so I could get that last bolt. <clears throat> there she came. This is the only bad section. Looks like these wheels have been maybe contacting. Yeah. Doesn't seem bad, but the seal could be bad, so. Something's rubbing. Yeah, I think the turbo shot. Here's the new eBay, eBay turbo cartridge. $78. Yeah, that's a lot smoother. All right, let's put this guy back in. Just make sure you got your O-ring in here and that pin right here. 
you can't have two of them. I'm gonna pull it out of the, the new turbo because it looks a tiny smaller there. I put a little grease on this, uh, the outlet. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, reverse order. I am going to pop this bottom bolt in. That was the last thing to come, come out for the drain, turbo drain. <clears throat> really no room in here to reach through here and lift on this hose underneath. Trying to wiggle that up. You know, because you can't see under here, so I got a mirror. As you can see if the flange is pushed all the way tight, I think if I can get at a spot where I can see under here. Yep, flange is all the way up. Get the turbo drain bolt from underneath. Get that wrench underneath. And the turbo just sitting in here now, it's not bolted in. But I got about 10, 10 cranks here to get it. I might even be able to get a little ratchet under here, a real short one. This wrench is about a four or five incher. And then I'll show you how we get the blower housing put back on. Okay. <clears throat> I use that same O-ring that was on there. I just put grease on it. Okay, that's tight. Now we've got these four bolts for the blower housing which is like impossible to, to do in this configuration. So now that that's kind of on there, I'll wiggle this and we're gonna bring the blower. Actually what I might do is, fighting some, this line right here. There we go, all right. And I had marked on the compress, uh, on this blower housing I marked with a notch right the orientation for spin here. I'm gonna, these are just a big flange headed, flange headed bolt. I dropped one. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is tighten those up with my Milwaukee. Yep. Two. Okay. And I'll snug those. That last one, way about down below, is a tough one. So that last one, this is the one where people don't uh, aren't able to access. Kind of figured this out. Pull the pull the turbo housing out. Watch out for these veins on the turbo, you don't wanna muck those up. And uh, you can get it up. Oh, okay. And I touched them. I don't wanna even, I don't want those to touch anything. And I can get down in here. Okay, that bolt started. And <clears throat> it's even accessible with this. Yep. Okay, I'm still protecting the, the snout, the blades on here, on the turbo, the veins. I just don't want those to touch anything. It's pretty delicate. Let's see if we can get this guy put in. There. Man, they did not design us any sort of clearance. This thing's holding up.
Okay. Now, <clears throat> take my hammer. It sure doesn't move very much with that. You take a little bit of a metal hammer, steel. There. <clears throat> now I can get the clamp on it. The clamp is a split clamp. Goes around the back. Comes back up the front. And the clamp will not yet clamp the V-band. It's called a V-band because it's not together all the way. So I need to do a little more persuading. The other one was rusty here, but I don't know, it just doesn't want to go. There we go. I'm not afraid to hit some stuff with a metal hammer if you have to. I don't like to do it, but that's what a, a plastic hammer is great because you don't want to hurt anything, but they don't have any power. All right. Put the nut on here. Tight. Tighten the V-band. I'm going to give it a little... just to seat that V-band a little bit. Oh yeah, that loosened it right up. Now we got the feed. Yep, there's a, a copper washer on either side of the, the feed, so one's gotta go underneath. And one is under the head of the bolt already, that stayed on there. That is a 17 millimeter. Yep. Okay. Gold. All right, now these two here, got two copper washers. And these are for the coolant. There's two lines. One's down below and then here's the upper. Guys, I forgot one thing. See the rod down there? The rod, that threaded rod underneath there. That has to be hooked up with a brass nut to the, the wastegate. I gotta, I gotta get that hooked up. All right, I just took the V-band off, popped the turbo back off, got the rod hooked up to the wastegate actuator arm, and now there's a brass nut that goes down here. All right, see that brass rod? Uh, I gotta get this nut on the end of the rod through here with a, uh, I'll use a small quarter inch ratchet. I'll show you that. All right, to tighten up that brass nut on that actuator rod, I've got a 10 millimeter deep well. Okay. There, she's tight. That's on. The drain is tight. Back to the lower coolant hose. I was putting that lower coolant hose on when I realized, uh, yeah, I uh, forgot that rod. Lower coolant hose. That's a 19 millimeter banjo fitting. The Harbor Freight Flexi. That's one. I didn't hook, unhook any wiring. There's a small uh, vacuum hose. It's going onto this wastegate actuator. That goes down there. It just hangs there. Uh, that was on the intake. This rigid hose is pain. Let's look at that. Gonna take a look at it. Oh car. my gosh, just look, just look at it. Just look at it. Oh my goodness. There. Okay, then she popped into place. Best that I do that one now. 
Okay. There we go. That ought to work just fine. All right, let's get the heat shield put on, the O2 sensor. It's got to go back in. And there's a small um, protective heat shield to go on this um, top oil feed line. And then we're ready to run this thing. So, heat shield, pain in the ass. These are, this is almost the most difficult part. It's going to be getting these two bolts on. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the right thing snip these out. There. A little slot there. <laughs> I even thought of mine putting them back in. Pain in the butt. I don't know. All right. I'm afraid if I don't run that thing, this it's going to melt. It's going to just fry everything here. These fasteners were just tough to get at. Get back in here. Way down there. Oh man. And I screwed into the other heat shield. So let's get that one started. No room. No room for your hands. All right, let's fight with this thing. Okay, exhaust uh, shield, bolts are tight, that one's tight, this one's somewhat tight, and that one I left out because I don't want to deal with it. Um, this turbo line here, that was tucked, this little snap-on heat shield, looked like it would fit up top here, maybe it does. Oh yeah, okay, that protects that, <clears throat> that banjo bolt, this little turbo shield tucked back in here, just, okay, there we go, that's easy, now I'm going to use my O2 sensor uh, wrench to tighten this, but I'm going to spin this backwards about 10 turns and drop the sensor in. Okay. Cool, but it works good for. Okay. All right, we got codes going on. This thing's been sitting for about a year due to the issue. There's the uh, reading the VIN. Okay. Yep, it's a mini da 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 da. Yep, let's say yes. Let's see what the Autel Maxis. 906 BT says that's been a pretty good computer scanning ripping through them pretty fast usually it takes a bit it's amazing how many modules and computers 17 I read Engine DMR, let's see, whatever fault code that is. Read codes. Bunch of misfires. No longer present. We're gonna do a erase code. Yes, okay. That's good. ABS stability control code. Read. Sometimes it's nice to know what they were. If it's a wheel sensor or something, let's see. Brake fluid level too low. No longer present. Let's uh, let's erase those. I'm gonna check the brake fluid. Okay. CAS car assist access system i don't know what he, what that C cas means let's figure that out not president selector lever interlock must be for the what transmission brake erase yes okay 
Okay, is that happy? Everybody's happy. Footwell module, air conditioning. Let's just erase those. Don't care. Don't care. The only thing we got is a tire pressure monitor. I'm gonna check the tire pressure. Rev it up a little here. We got the tack. Brand new. Oh yeah, it's low tires. We got low, low tire problems here. There we go. And then we're gonna take it for a rip and find out how that turbo is working. Just for a rip out of your butt. Just for a rip. Okay, I just got back in the car, filled up the tires. Uh, they were from 10 pounds to 25 pounds. Recommended pressure on this thing is 35 front and rear, 35 pounds. The uh, the light went out for the um, the tire pressure monitoring system, and I don't I don't have any other coats, so we're gonna go for a little spin. Yeah, she rips along pretty good. Uh, I had a I had a coat come up for, for some brake. I don't know what that was, but it went away. Power pull out here in the in the boonies. I'm looking for exhaust smoke coming out the exhaust because that's a new. I got about four miles on her now. She, turbo ought to be looped up. Right to the floor. Oh yeah, she's pulling hard. Wow, yeah. No smoke back there. I think we got her fixed for seventy-eight dollars with an eBay China. 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 Turbo, the Wuhan whistle. We got her. Uh, we got her fixed. It seems to run pretty darn good. Here's some when you hit the, when you hit the bumps on the road, it kind of it, it shifts over about four inches in the lane. I think it needs an alignment, maybe maybe some struts, but because it's got 127 thou on it, brakes work fantastic. The automatic transmission, that thing shifts great. again all right guys just got back from the test drive put in the this is the uh, turbo cartridge that I replaced on this car and that fixed the problem there's a seal in here and in and the seal must be bad and, and oil can get from the the oiling there's an oil port off the engine here and it can it can get into the exhaust system that was causing all the problems now previous owner had a quote for like four grand to get this fixed at the dealership two hours put, took me two hours to put this in cleared the codes aired up the tires drives and runs great i think it might need struts that's the only thing i could say about it and and it needs a battery so um yeah it's good to go my daughter's gonna drive this one thanks for watching guys